From the east and the west, you've heard others, but now you've tuned into the best. This is a Prime Wave Media production. Is AAC bets list under 62 and a half. First game up, SMU and Temple. We have uh, two teams going at it right here. We got a Temple team that's not playing good football at all this year to start off. So pretty much, um, you know, SMU is in it. And they look like they're going to be really, really uh, looking towards uh, getting some uh, getting some good action in and everything with Temple. Temple started the season a little too late, and I think this is going to be a big, big, big um, blowout in a sense, but it's not going to go over the 62.5. Temple's not going to give up 50 points or anything like that, but they'll probably lose like 40 to 10 or something of that nature because Temple, I'm not going to say they're bad, but they're, they're just not – it's just not there there at this point this year. They started way too late. These teams that started earlier in the season have a bit of an advantage over them right now. So it is what it is at the end of the day. Then we got uh, East Carolina going against um, South Florida. No, 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 no. Going against Tulane. I'm so sorry about that. And um, pretty much in this spot, we got ourselves a really good game. But I truly do think after what happened to ECU last week, there shouldn't be any issues about this team uh, winning this week. I know they're going against Tulane, but they're going to be back at home this week. And after that loss last week against a Tulsa team that's seen as one of the better teams in the conference this season, and the way that they lost in a controversial way, this team is going to make sure that they don't make the same mistakes that they made in the last game. And they might actually run away with this one as well, too. So check it on out. Plus 160 on ECU. Let's see how it shakes out. Hopefully it goes in the right direction. And then we got Navy. And uh, Navy has themselves a pretty good game this week as well, too. They're going against Tulsa. And Tulsa, you know, they laid an uh, egg. And it was a nasty one, too, last week. So they're hard to trust at this point. I think Navy actually comes into this game. And they're going to have a bit of an advantage because, you know, they've been playing against a, a, a lot tougher than Memphis. And then... Um, They've been playing against a lot tougher than Tulsa has. So pretty much I'm going to go ahead and take Navy with the plus 10 and a half here. Let's see how it shakes out. Memphis, South Florida. South Florida is absolutely dreadful here in the um, AAC. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take the minus 18 on Memphis here and circle it up. I think Memphis is a three touchdown or a better winner come, uh, come Saturday, Friday, whatever day they play. But they are going to win by three touchdowns or better. And I would say that they could be a very confident first half pick as well, too. So there it is. Over uh, 18 and um, 18 to Memphis. This will grow to about 20 and a half, 21 by the time we get to kickoff. So I would say take it today and move forward with it. Then we got Houston. Houston, we have a problem. Houston is going against Cincinnati this week. Cincinnati is a top 10 team this year. They're playing really good football. A lot of people are um, really into what they're doing and everything like that. So pretty much it is what it is at the end of the day. I'm going to go ahead and take Houston in this spot. And I really do feel like Houston can be the team that can be, um, you know, pretty much a spoiler in a sense to Cincinnati's great season as well, too. They could possibly get an upset here. But... I would say this, let's just bet for them to go ahead and get a good cover for us. So we move forward, and now let's go ahead and talk about the Conference USA. The Conference USA, we have ourselves some pretty good games this week. Um, everybody in the conference is playing, but two of the teams are playing against uh, FCS schools. So we have these five that are in conference games, though. And um, we got uh, Middle Tennessee State. They're in a good game um, in their spot as well, too. I'm over here looking, making sure I got everything right for you guys as well, too, because I got the computer right in front of me today. So I'm making sure 
I'm just not throwing out games and mixing up the team. So pretty much you got Middle Tennessee State going against Charlotte. Charlotte has played some pretty good football this season. But I think that uh, Middle Tennessee State, State plays their best football on the road as well, too. So I'm going to go ahead and t- – I mean on at home. I'm so sorry. At home. And uh, pretty much I'm taking Middle Tennessee State at home with the plus 150. Let's see how it shakes out. It's at a four and a half right now on the spread. I could see this uh, actually dipping a little bit lower than that. It should go off at about three and a half, three when we get to kickoff. So there it is. There it is. So I'm taking the plus 150, Middle Tennessee State. Let's see how it shakes out. Then we got um, – San Antonio's UTSA. UTSA is going to be playing against Rice. As I said before, Rice is another team that's just getting into the flow of the season. They had a lot of issues with COVID and everything early in the year. So now they're pretty much now starting to play their full schedule and things of that nature. But I still think UTSA, it's what these sneaky little devils will figure out a way to cover in this game or figure out a way to win this game. So San Antonio plus four and a half. Let's see how it shakes out. Then we got UTEP and UTEP is a favorite for the first time in a very long time in a conference game. But that's because this season is different from their past seasons before. So UTEP, I like them. I like them a lot. I think FIU is falling off the uh, face of the earth. They had a horrible loss against the FCS school uh, last week. So it's going to be – it's it's tough on uh, FIU right now. So I love UTEP as the home team in this spot. I think they take care of their business, and they go ahead and win this game and win it big too, uh, to be honest with you. So there it is, UTEP minus 130. Let's see how it checks out. Then we got West – in Kentucky and Florida Atlantic. Um, actually, Florida Atlantic is a huge favorite in this game, but I really do like the over in this spot. I know Florida Atlantic hasn't been scoring a lot of points, but they haven't been giving up a lot of points either. This is the type of game, though, where the offense opens up, in a sense, in my opinion, and I think that's what's going to happen here on Saturday. So I'm taking the over 40 and a half. Western Kentucky, uh, Florida Atlantic. Let's see how it goes. Then we got Louisiana Tech. And Louisiana Tech's playing in a really good game themselves. They're playing against North Texas. They're going to be the road team this time around. And um, North Texas got a week off last week, so I truly do feel like what's going to happen here is that Louisiana Tech winds up coming in here and gets a good win here at a plus 105. Little skinny dog here, you know, a little frail dog, but it's all good. We'll, we'll go ahead and see how it goes. But I think that we catch this ticket right here as well, too. Plus 105, Louisiana Tech. Let's see how it shakes out. Then we move on to the match. And with the bets list today, we got the over um, 55, West Virginia, Texas on Saturday. Uh, this is a Big 12 matchup. I do like this one a lot. Um, as you know, the the horns hook up, and they usually go over in their games. This is going to be a tough one for them on Saturday because West Virginia coming off a huge win against Kansas State. So here it is, over 55, West Virginia, Texas. Yeah, the line is looking pretty good, too, but the, le- the line is tempting. It's six and a half to Texas, but I think the over is a better bet. I think that's going to be the stronger play here. Then you got Kansas and Oklahoma. And Kansas is coming in here as a 30-point 38 point dog and you know what it's not hard to take them in this spot as a 38 point dog. I think that they lightweight show up and they find a way to just lose by five touchdowns or less. So I'm taking Kansas with the plus 38. Let's see how it shakes out. Then you got Texas Tech TCU. Texas Tech is very t- does tend to go over and does tend to go give up a lot of points in the process as well too. I know it may be tough because TCU does play some pretty good defense, but I think in this one the number is too good to pass up. So I'm taking the over 61 and a half here. Texas Tech TCU. Let's see how it shakes out. Then we got Kansas State as my dog better the week and they owe me money because last week they messed up. They were we had them on money line last week as well too, but we were on the road last week. This week we're at home. We're going against the Oklahoma State team that's just coming off their first loss of the season. And you know K State, they've lost two already, but K State fights when they're at home as well too. So I'm saying to you guys that it could be a strong bet on the spread as well. But I do like Kansas State to to shake the apple cart and get a huge victory over Oklahoma State over in Manhattan. 
Kansas. All right, so there it is, K-State plus 360. And then we have the under 47 and a half, Baylor, Iowa State. Baylor is very inept on offense. And Iowa State is a team that chews up clock, really, really shortens the game, like I like to say. And uh, pretty much this works out to me where it comes to be like a 30 to 7 game, something of that nature. So there it is, under 47. And that's going to, under 47 and a half, that's going to be Baylor and LSU. And then we have up next is going to be the Mountain West. And in the Mountain West, we have a good game coming up tomorrow. And that's going to be the uh, Utah State uh, game against the um, Nevada Wolfpack. And Nevada is getting 16 in this one. No, thank you. Uh, Utah State, I know you're not as good as you were last year and things, you're a brand new team somewhat, but I know that you guys are good enough to cover that 16 and a half right there. I know you didn't look too good the first few weeks, but you played against two of the top teams in the conference. When I look at Nevada, you're not a top team in my opinion. Beating up on UNLV does not warrant you to give get props on being one of the killers in the division. And you had to luck out against Wyoming to beat them as well too. So literally, this one right here calls for Utah State to get a nice cover in this game in my opinion. So I'm taking them with the plus 16 and a half. Then you got Colorado State. Colorado State going against Wyoming. And this is kind of an um, oversight. To me, Wyoming should be a two and a half point dog because they're going on the road once again. Colorado State plays much better at home as well, too. And they started off pretty well against uh, Fresno, but things fell apart. And I think they just needed to get that game out of the way. Now they have their next game of the season, home game. And it should be good for him. So I'm taking uh, Colorado State with the plus three and a half in this spot. I think the money line is going to be a strong play there as well, too. But the home team, get us home, Colorado State. Then we got a good rival. We got the, North, we got the with Silicon Valley going against the Beach Boys. And that's going to be San Jose State from the north and San Diego from the south. And these guys do not like each other. And they always play some pretty damn good games as well, too. San Jose has kept it very close with um, San Diego State over the years. That's why they're a nine-and-a-half-point dog coming into this one. Because I've seen them in years of being a 35-point dog. 28 point dog to San Diego State and they always figure out a way to show up because they know San Diego State is a interstate rival and they are one of the better teams in the conference so I'm going with uh, San Jose State plus nine and a half let's see how it shakes out and then we have the over 58 Fresno State UNLV that quarterback slings that pill and I know he's going to be able to do some big things come Saturday as well too against UNLV and I expect UNLV to get some scores in as well too. Their offense looked really good on Saturday, but you know that there's some things that they do need to work on, and then that is what practice is for. So let's see how it shakes out. I'm taking the over 58 with Fresno State and UNLV. Then we have the under 62 and a half with Mexico and Hawaii. And in this one, I think what happens here is that Hawaii comes in here flat from a long plane ride, and Hawaii beats up on them, but they don't beat up on them too bad. So I'm taking the under 62 and a half, New Mexico, Hawaii. Let's see how it shakes out. Now we move on, and we got the Pac-12. And you know, guys, know if you've been following me for years, the Pac-12 has always been good to me in conference play. Up first, we got the Trojans going against the Sun Devils, and this one is going to be under 58 and a half. I feel like this is going to be somewhat of a uh, defensive stall, you know? I expect USC to play staunch defense. I play, expect ASU to play staunch defense in this one as well, too. Keeping this game under 58 and a half, I think it finishes up 24 to 21 because I do have ASU uh, covering in this game as well, too, in my, uh, in, uh, my other notes. But this is the better bet here, under 58 and a half. Let's see how it shakes out. And then we got Arizona going against Utah. And I like Arizona here because they're in the middle of a, of a rebuild. Nobody really knows who they are. And usually when you don't know who Arizona is, they always tend to show up. So I'm pretty much taking Arizona on a insurance bet that they cover this game, lose by 10 or less. I'm taking Arizona plus 14. Let's see how it shakes out. Now we got the 
UCLA Bruins and the Colorado Buffaloes. And this is going to be a really good game as well, too. And what I like here is that both these teams have a clean slate from last year after struggling throughout the season most of the year. Now they're back at it. They feel like they got some really good upperclassmen. And you know Chip Kelly's on the clock as well, too. This is the third, fourth season here at UCLA. At some point, he has to step up and step it up mightily as well, too. So I'm going to go ahead and take the over 55 and a half UCLA Colorado. Let's see how it shakes out. And uh, we go from there. Now we got the um, Stanford Oregon game. And I think what happens here is that Stanford winds up covering because Stanford always plays Oregon really tough, especially at Oregon. And these guys have had classics over the years. And to open up the season against each other just goes to tell you something as well, too. So I love Stanford in the spot against Oregon to cover the plus 10. Let's see how it shakes out. Then we got Oregon State going against Washington State. This is a perfect matchup for them to start the season. So then, you know, pretty much if they do step it up and put everything together, they'll be able to get themselves a big win to start the season. And I know they would love that as well, too. So Oregon State with the minus 120. Let's see how it shakes out. And then we have the Cal Bears, the California Golden Bears. And the Golden Bears actually started off pretty good last year, but they fell apart as the season progressed. And, you know, pretty much that's the story of their lives as well, too. So what I'm going to do here is I think what happens is, is that Cal is going to come out and actually have a big game against Washington, a team that they've beaten at home a few times over the last few meetings that they had in um, Berkeley. So pretty much what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take Cal with the minus 120. Let's see how it shakes out. And um, there it is. There it is for today's bets list. And we move forward. Um, I actually got the uh, pack four for you guys as well, too. All right. Well, it kind of went off the screen a little bit, but there it is. It's Miami of Ohio. Um Minus 115. Then the uh, other play is going to be the um, the other play will be the money line that's going to be in the Eastern Michigan game as well, too. And then we got the uh, over um, 52 Buffalo, Northern Illinois in the under 55 with Ohio and CMU. So there it is with that one. Uh, yeah, let me fix that for y'all, man. That's lazy. Yeah, don't be lazy. That There it is, Mac. In, uh, Eastern Michigan. Uh, Plus 160, Miami of Ohio, minus 115, under 55, Ohio, Central Michigan, and then the over 52 with Buffalo and Northern Illinois. You guys already know where I'm going with the other plays as well, too. I put out yesterday's Mac bets list as well. So you guys have at it. That's all I can say. And there it is, 16 to 1. Mac pick four for the night. And we could go ahead and pick see what you can do with that one as well, too. All right, so let's go ahead, jump into it. Park West. And this one is a awesome track. Uh, the ACC has some pretty good games going on this week. We got NC State in their matchup. Um, once again, NC State is a big, big dog uh, here in we all know the reason why, because they really do feel like NC State could be, you know, have some issues and things like that with Miami, but they are the home team as well, too. So this is more of a scarier situation for Miami to me than it is for NC State. NC State has stepped up to the plate all season this year, and it's not going to be hard to take them right now on the plus 10 and a half year. Um, I like NC State a lot. Let's go ahead and see how it shakes out. Then we got the Battle of Tobacco Row with uh, UNC and Duke. Under 64 and a half here. I think what happens here is that we're going to have ourselves a very good game between very, two old, good old rivals. And as I told you guys last week, when we had the oldest rivalry in the South with North Carolina or Virginia to be ready for a possible upset, Virginia smoked North Carolina. North Carolina is not a good road team, and that's showing up right now because, as you guys can see, they struggled against Florida State, they struggled against Virginia, and they struggle and they and they lightweight. And if uh, they they didn't make mistakes at the end. They would have lost to Boston College as well, too. So there it is with um, that. Um, 
I'm going under 64 and a half with the uh, UNC and Duke. I feel like Duke wants to cut the game in half a little bit, shorten the game in a sense. And um, what the uh, UNC wants to do, they might be over here overlooking Duke, and then they may get themselves in trouble in this game as well too. So we'll see how it shakes out. But under 64 and a half, that's my look for this game. We'll see how it goes. Then we got Boston College, Boston College, and the uh, Syracuse uh, Orangemen. And these guys know each other very well from the old Big East days. And um, I think what happens here is that uh, we get a little bit of scoring going on in the Carrier Dome. BC has been seen as a team that can't put up 30, 40 points in a game if the offense is in a flow. And Syracuse seems to be uh, letting offenses be in a flow a lot every weekend. And Syracuse might be able to uh, get themselves some points as well here too. But they definitely definitely do need to get some points but i do love the over 52 and a half i think we can go ahead and cash that ticket here and uh let's see how it shakes out then we got florida state florida state's in a pretty cool matchup this week this is something that they honestly to me florida state should not have the issues that they've been having lately with these um with with these teams because this is a game that they're supposed to win but you know what at the end of the day florida state has lost the trust of all of us so it doesn't really matter but florida state just don't just make it just just win the game that's all i ask you to do it doesn't need to be pretty it doesn't need to be any of that just go win the game for me okay and for the everybody else who's going to be backing you guys on saturday as well too note your dame is going to be my dog better the week in the CFB. I really do think that this is the end of the Clemson run because DJ did well last week against a uh, Boston College team, but that was mainly the defense as well, too, that stepped it up, had big moments in that game as well, too. Special teams as well. And, um, you know, the, the, the seniors led that game for Clemson last week. This week, they, they really need Trevor Lawrence to be the starting quarterback, and that's not going to happen. DJ's going to run into a lot of issues here with uh, Notre Dame. And see, this time around, the game is not in North Carolina. It's not in Dev Valley this time around. The game is in South Bend. And whenever there's a game in South Bend, everybody that knows college football knows if you're a top-ranked team going to South Bend, you better get ready to lose. Seriously. Because... Everything goes their way. And the last time they had a big game like this, it was Florida State. Same type of team. Team had, that hadn't lost in a while. And what happens? What happens? This is what happens. Notre Dame wins the football game, but Charlie Ward still went on to win the Heisman Trophy. And Florida State still went on to win the national championship that season. So... Really, pretty much my point is Notre Dame plus 180 looks like some good money here. Let's see how it shakes out. Clemson should not still be a high favorite in this game. It should really be a pick to be honest with you, because quarterback play is a big, big deal for this Clemson team. And it showed last week when they went down 18 points. So there it is. There it is. And then we have Virginia money line. They're going against Louisville. Toss up game, pick a side. But I think Virginia got their season rolling in the right way last week with a big win over North Carolina in the oldest rivalry in the South. So I'm taking them again this week, plus, uh, minus 145, Virginia. Let's see if you, you can get to the money, dog. So there it is, Virginia minus 145. Let's see how it shakes out. All right, we move on, and we got the Big Ten. The Big Ten is missing a game this week. Uh, Purdue and Wisconsin are actually going to be taking the week off because of COVID and things of that nature. So up first, we got the Northwestern game. Northwestern is red hot. Um, going into the third week of the season their defense has stepped it up they've already gotten about six interceptions this season to start the year off this team is very confident right now on the defensive end i saw a little piece on them last night and this team does look like they're going to be running the table this year in the big 10 and they really do look good you can tell that the boys have grown up they had a lot of underclassmen last year now they have a lot of uh good juniors and seniors but then they also have some guys that were red shirted gray shirted whatever and these guys have came back and they've done very well uh too so i'm taking northwestern in this game i think northwestern is good money here i know they're playing against nebraska but nebraska uh has been having way too many um weeks off and things of that nature and nebraska just didn't show me much of anything when they played ohio state they started off well but then they just pretty much got uh you know power bomb through the uh craft table dude after what <laughs> once that second half hit man and they was incapacitated so pretty much um i'm taking the minus 
three and a half Northwestern. Let's see how it shakes out. We got Michigan. And, you know, Michigan, um, this is going to be a really good game. Michigan and Indiana. And, uh, honestly, I was leaning real hard on Indiana. But this is a game that Michigan will w wind up winning. And they'll win it because there's going to be a lot of people doubting them in this spot. But I don't think that Michigan should be doubted in this spot. Penn State's not as good as the uh, years before. They're having it. They're struggling this season because you know Penn State needed those tune-up games early in the year. You know the games against uh, you know um, Buffalo and things of that nature, so they could tune up right. But this time around, they 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 jump right into the schedule. You got Minnesota early, then you get um, Ohio State the next week. Michigan actually should be two and zero right now, but once again, they're dealing with the woes and not being able to beat the Michigan State Spartans. See, Ohio State's bad enough, but damn, when you can't beat uh, Michigan State on a season that they seen as a team that's not going to be a good team at all then you're, you got some issues over here at Michigan. But I think they bounce back. They get a big win here against Indiana after that that silly defeat. And uh, they bounce back big here. So pretty much Michigan minus 155. Let's see how it shakes out. Then we got the uh, Michigan State-Iowa game. The, they're coming back. And, um, you know, pretty much Michigan State feeling real confident, feeling real good about themselves. But I think Iowa probably will shut it down. And this will wind up being a, a very low-scoring game in a sense. So pretty much it is what it is at the end of the day. I like the under 46 and a half. I know it looks crazy right now, but usually when we go to Iowa, these games do wind up being like this. So I expect a 24 to 21 finish maybe, or hopefully a 24 to 17 finish. Everything is on the under, so let's go ahead and see how it goes. We move forward, and we got Minnesota, Illinois. This game is a battle of two teams that – can't get off the field. Both have been scoring a good amount of points, but they've been giving up a good amount of points as well, too. You have a, a Illinois team that gave up, uh, what, 40 in the first, 40 some odd points in the first week. They gave up 31 last week and uh, pretty much that's 75 on the season. So they're giving up a good almost 36, 36, 37 points a game. Then you got Minnesota who got 45 dropped on them last week, and then got 39 dropped on them the week before. No, 49 dropped on them the week before. This team has given up a lot of points. So pretty much um, both teams, I can see them getting into a big, big shootout of a sense. But we all know, though, this is risky territory because Minnesota does play a very, very astonishing ground game. And they like to eat a lot of clock up. But last week, they were moving pretty quickly, and they they, they were down 21, but got that 21 points back pretty quickly. I can't believe the team drops 35 unanswered points and still winds up losing the game. Unbelievable. Minnesota has a bad taste in their mouth. And Illinois, I, I, hopefully Illinois knows this and steps up their game because Minnesota is ready to rip anybody's throat out after that 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 bad beat that they caught last week. Then we got the uh, Maryland-Penn State game. This should be the uh, shoo-in for uh, Penn State this week. They're a 25-point favorite. I honestly think they can cover it, but I'm more confident in the over in this spot. Maryland, once again, is a team that's given up 77 points in the first two weeks of the season. When you do the math on that one, that's 33 and a half points. So, you know what? This team is going to give up points today, um, I mean on Saturday, and I feel like Penn State will be ready to take advantage of that. They're going to be at home. They had a rough time here with uh, – they had a rough time with Ohio State last week. This is a breath of fresh air going against a team like Maryland. So, yeah, I know they got to his brother, and he caused some excitement last week. But you know what? They – that – that I keep it real. They caught him on a good Friday night, and that's why I knew we had to take the plus nineteen. They caught him on a Friday night at home, and that's what usually happens when you got Friday night ACC games with two teams that are not the top team tier teams in the conference. You know what I mean? So I mean a Big Ten. I'm so sorry because I said ACC because y'all got to remember uh, Maryland was in the ACC for a little while, so it is what it is. But um, there it is. Over 63, Maryland, Penn State. Then we got the plus 37 and a half with Rutgers. Uh, Rutgers should be able to cover last year. Rutgers was a 50-point dog against Ohio State. They wound up losing the game by 29. They lost 50 to 21. So this year, Rutgers again. Uh, you got Greg.
Greg Schiano there. So I really know you're not going to lay down with Greg Schiano coaching a guy that worked with Ohio State literally the last decade or so and knows the defense and offense uh, in and out. He he's he he was one of Ryan Day's mentors as well too. So I wouldn't say this is danger, but I would say that Rutgers. Don't be surprised if Rutgers is in this game. You know what I mean? And I mean, and when if Rutgers being in the game is like them losing by fourteen. Seriously, because they're gonna lose and they're gonna lose bad. But will it be ugly? And I don't think it's gonna be ugly. I think that they're gonna try. They're gonna fight. They're gonna claw, and then they'll be beat. Okay. So there it is. Thirty-seven and a half plus on the Rutgers. All right, we move on, and we have ourselves the SEC bets list in the SEC. What a conference, baby. Seriously, what an overrated conference. And now we got four teams. We only got four games this week. And, um, you know, I ain't know that they got off weeks as well, too. But I know that we got covered issues as well, too. So um, it is what it is. Um, over 45 and I have Vandy, Mississippi State. I like this one a lot. I think this is going to be a pretty good game. I think what winds up here is Mississippi State actually has their big game of this season, the highlight real game, just like I said last week when Ole Miss played them. Vandy's just a real doormat here in the SEC this season, and there's really nothing that they can do about it. Then we have Georgia, Moneyline, in the battle of Georgia, Florida. It is a big, big one here, and I really, truly feel that Georgia takes care of their business. They get themselves a big win here and i'm taking them with the minus 160 let's see how it shakes out then we got south carolina going against texas a&m and i would not sleep on picking uh south carolina as a money line play as well too because you got to understand south carolina beat florida florida is a much better team, in my opinion, than Texas A&M. So pretty much what I'm going to do here is a plus 10 could be the possible uh, big upset for you this weekend as well, too. So don't overlook that fact right there. South Carolina can be trusted in a big spot like this. So I love the plus 10 on South Carolina. That's an insurance play. Let's see how it shakes out. And then we have the uh, Tennessee uh, game coming up Saturday with Arkansas. And I really, truly do like Tennessee in this spot. I think Tennessee actually figures out a way to run away with this game. It'll be close in the beginning, but then Tennessee gets away from um, Arkansas. Because Tennessee's played a really tough uh, schedule the last few weeks. And I think this will be a breath of fresh air for them as well, too. So give me Tennessee minus 125. Let's see how it shakes out. Now let's go ahead and get into some betting action. Thank you for tuning in to the Primetime Angles, the premier sports betting show, hosted by the one and only Pop DiBiase, the Primetime Capper. This is a Prime Wave Media production, and go ahead and press that subscribe button.